Welcome back, everybody. So let's talk about the NBA draft that just occurred. We're going to talk about the teams that picked them and maybe what we expect from those players. JR? So Phoenix Suns, they selected DeAndre, jo uh, DeAndre Ayton, who's a center, um, who, you know, projected number one overall uh, since the beginning of the draft. I mean, the Phoenix Suns, they really need a center, a new center, because of uh, um, the problems with, like, having having a good inside man. I, um, I, can, I can read a little bit about what the scouts were picking on him. So with, with DeAndre Ayton, this guy was, uh, everyone, uh, in terms of uh, scouting report, he's... Everyone's saying he's a, has a shade of Patrick Ewing, Carl Anthony Towns, or Cousins. Uh, his, some of his strengths are basically saying that he has a, uh, he's very athletic, uh, he's agile and very fluid. Uh, he apparently has that kind of uh, footwork like Joel Embiid, uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, he has very wide body, thick frame. So he's saying that they're saying that he's NBA body. Um, he's, he can shoot and he has soft touch for a big man. Apparently he has a pretty good ball handling skills. He can finish at the rim. And they're saying that he's also underrated as a passer. Mm -hmm. So for a big man who has, that's probably why they're saying he has a shade of the Marcus Cousins. Uh, he's a good rebounder, and he, he could be a good switch, uh, switchable defender that can go multiple on pick and rolls and can switch on guards. That's what they're basically saying. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that he's a good uh, player in terms of defending the rim and altering shots. So that's some of the strengths that they're mentioning. Him. Mm -hmm. How do you think that's a good fit for the Phoenix Suns right now, who does need a center? Yeah. Yes, yeah, inside inside presence they'll definitely need because um, Tyson Chandler, who, who used to play there, was one of their highlights, I guess, for Phoenix Suns. And now they're they're leaning on uh, Devin Booker, who I think they're already set in the back court, but I really did need to be focusing on the front court, which DeAndre Ayton will be a perfect fit for them, and having them uh, a good presence inside and outside with Devin Booker um, being able to run it, it, a guard situations and DeAndre Ayton in the paint uh, blocking shots putting up back put backs and everything else inside in, in the paint. Mm -hmm. and, and you just touched upon, you just pointed out a good passer, right? And it's about potential and pairing up Devin Booker with DeAndre Ayton, you're talking about potential, right? And you're talking about it's a good starting block for the Phoenix Suns. And it's, you know, if he can play it like DeMarcus Cousins or if that's someone that he's compared to, that's kind of a, that's kind of a dangerous duo too, mm -hmm. like a, a pass, sure. a kind of a potential passer to Booker, who's a shooter and also a presence down low. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I can't wait to see the Phoenix Suns because Booker is obviously uh, a favorite amongst people. But um, again, DeAndre Aiden, I haven't seen a lot of him, a lot of his highlights. But uh, someone that's big and someone that can pass is always someone that's on my radar. How do, mm -hmm. What do you think, Mark? <laughs> when you can't teach height, that's just yeah. one thing that um, that NBA scouts always talk about. You can't teach height. Uh, and one thing that he has that uh, that is coveted by a lot of uh, NBA scouts, NBA teams, is not just his size, but his ability to move. Because we've had we've had we've drafted like a lot of teams back then have drafted tall, uh, really tall def uh, p uh, players. Like I don't I forgot his name from uh, the, the one that Memphis drafted. He was like seven three, and everyone thought that he was going to be uh, you know, Greg Oden. A lot of tall players. But the, the, the thing about him is that he has the, the, the footwork, the agility that you need for a big man now, the modern NBA that needs, you know, the, he's NBA body in terms of um, his uh, frame, but he also has the touch that, that really allows him to be able to play, uh, not just in any situation, but also late game because he can shoot. And, and it, the, the Suns have never really been good at drafting players. Booker was like one of the you know star, mm -hmm. yeah. star, one of the highlights that they've drafted. Yeah. If you pa if look at the past few uh, years I've had drafted, Alex Len was been um, Dragon Bender. Uh, it's been it's been really uh, it's been really horrible for them. So this was a sure thing. They can't just they can't mess this up. So with the first pick, and I think DeAndre Ayton could do some damage for them mm. as long as they turn their franchise around and start you know okay. <laughs> taking care of their players. Here yeah. we go. Let's move on to number two. And then Sacramento Kings select. Marvin Bagley, uh, the third, a uh, Duke freshman who averaged 21 points and 11 rebounds uh, at double double. And, you know, reading from his um, prospect scouting report, is he's a complicated prospect, but he's, he's a modern tweener, uh, uh, but he's unreliable with his jump shot and as a, his body as a forward. But he has still have, has a promising aspect to his game, um, adding towards what he can do for his Sacramento Kings. I, I guess Mark can go all, um, continue what, what uh, he can do. The scouting report, yeah. A lot of the, a lot of things that they saying about him is uh, like you mentioned, 
he's long. He he say they're saying that he he has a good uh, he's has that Tristan Thompson like uh, knack for offense and rebound. He's a relentless rebounder. He he can go for, uh, coast to coast. So grab the rebound and go through the lane just because of his length and his height and also his uh, ability to uh, to care, to uh, dribble the ball from one end to the other. They're saying that he's a he's a good finisher. Uh, but uh, one of the things is that. Uh, they're saying in terms of him is he's a left-handed player, which is a really good, yeah. uh, the really good advantage for a player in the NBA. But one thing also that they're saying is he's very dependent on it. He's almost like he can't go right, so he's almost oh. so a lot, a lot of he, <laughs> so a lot of people that are saying they remind him of like a Julius Randle or a, um, a James Harden kind of player who just goes left. So in terms of what do you think is going to be for him to be mm-hmm. in Sacramento? What kind of Benef- what kind of impact do you think he can give to the Sacramento Kings, which in need of <laughs> some improvement after losing Cousins? Mm. Well, like your his stats, 20, 20 what, 22 points per 21, game. Yeah, yeah. 21, it, it kind of proves that he can score in and out. So Sacramento Kings needs a scorer, some, someone that can put the ball in the hoop. But I'm kind of nervous again. Like you said, he can only go left because it's either he's really dominant with his left hand or mm. because of NBA scouts and NBA you know defenders, which are more athletic, uh, I don't know if he if he's a one-shot pony, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like he better adapt to the game quick mm-hmm. and make sure that he's all the worth of that Puma sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> so you bet. I, I, I think he's one of the raw players that yeah. from the draft, one of the biggest potential, but he's very raw still. Like, yeah. uh, he skipped his... Uh, he, he went straight... Uh, he had one of his high, senior high school. He kind of advanced it because of, he took uh, extra classes. So he's one of the ones that, coming into this draft which actually has a little bit of maybe a year or two late in terms of development. So yeah. he has the most potential. This is probably why the Sacramento Kings took mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. So it's up to them to kind of develop him to see yeah. how he's going to fit with the rest of their... Uh, with, they had a good pick last year with Boyan, who was a really good shooter that they had. Uh, Darren Fox. So it's a good fit for them because they needed kind of a forward, a power forward slash forward player that can uh, complement those two. So Bagley's probably one... To get. I guess we could talk about our last pick uh, uh, that we can. The third pick, Atlanta Hawks, they choose Luka Donick, but there was a trade that happened. Uh, so the Mavericks, they switch picks with the Atlanta Hawks, the three uh, for the fi- for the five. So Atlanta Hawks will be actually getting Trey Young, and mm. uh, Dallas Mavericks will, uh, will be actually getting Luka Donick, Doncic. And that's, I guess that's how you say his name. Doncic, yeah. Um, hey, talk like about Donkey talk about his, his game, Mark. Trey Young. Well, or oh, oh, any of those guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go with Luke because okay. I think he's uh, he's uh, he's a European superstar right now. Mm-hmm. He's the prodigy coming out of the Euroleague. He won the MVP uh, as Real he, Madrid. He took the Real Madrid out <laughs> yeah. to the finals, and he he played uh, better than anyone else in the Real Madrid. And he was a rookie, technically a 19 year old, playing with the veterans in Real Madrid. So a lot of the things that that are highlighting about him is his pass, his passing ability. He's he's one of those players that just kind of gets you like. To watch his game because of the fact that every passes that he makes, you don't know where it's gonna go, you don't know who's gonna who's gonna grab the ball. So that's one of the the highlights about him. Uh, his size too for a point guard to be six eight, that's just incredible. Like a lot of, I think uh, Simmons, he has that Simmons kind of height, but he all but the difference is he has the shooting ability that uh, that Simmons doesn't have, and and that's or a lot Alonzo Ball. So the people, the new age of point guards nowadays are going towards tall. Athletic mm-hmm. and, yeah. and and uh, passing abilities of point guards nowadays. They're just adding the height now. So yeah. that's one of the things that he has. He also does a lot of um, what's great about him. He's competitive and he's aggressive. So he's the type of player that does has that drive and the the motive to kind of go into the basket to get to take over games. So that's something that he had that he did with Madrid when they went to the finals. So mm-hmm. uh, a lot of good things about him, like in t- intangible things like leadership and, and and helping everyone else get involved and everyone else. Eh, uh, helping them get better and get the best out of them. That's one of the things that they're mentioning about his ability. And what do you think he's going to do for the Dallas? That's something that we we want to find out from you guys. Well, quickly, he'll 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 get the mentorship of um, Dirk Nowitzki and also play in the backcourt or not not with the back yeah in the backcourt with Dennis Smith Jr., which is pretty promising for Dallas Mavericks who are uh, trying to revamp the roster and get back into playoffs contention. Yeah, I believe I believe it's a good it's a good pick for Dallas, and I feel Dallas will. 
Dallas has always been a good franchise in terms of the fan support and all the organization. So with Dennis Smith Jr. and Doncic, oh, it's going to be exciting, I think. You got, mm. uh, you got a small, explosive dunker and someone with a lot of energy. And then you have Doncic, who's like, kind of like, like a wizard kind of thing, passer, mm. and that can shoot. So it's an interesting dynamic. And obviously, Nerwitzki has to ah, retire <laughs> soon. But again, he'll be a good mentor and he'll be a, a good pick and a, a good, good way for the Dallas Mavericks to, you know, actually battle up there mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. hey we don't have an, we don't have a lot of time uh we'd like to finish off any shout outs you'd like to say mark marky mark oh shout out to all, all the fans that keep watching us continue to watch and comment on our on our content and keep sharing i mean the last content that we did shout out to uh team undefeated uh coach tone uh for mm -hmm. uh the amazing show yeah. uh, the amazing episode that you guys did everybody enjoyed it i mean all your families and friends are just like commenting amazing positive mm -hmm. comment feedbacks from them so shout outs and continue to support the Filipino basketball and the Raptors and NBA too right mm -hmm. Jared anything you'd like to say I know our, our season's almost up and running uh, almost done mm. um, if this might this might be our, my last episode for this mm -hmm. season so uh, thank you guys for continuing to support all of us uh, uh, keep continue to support us through our social media accounts on Twitter Facebook and Instagram we're also on YouTube uh, we've got some new exciting things happening as well, especially for the Filipino TV, the new re revamped um, whole um, uh, TV station. And, and it's going to be really exciting for this upcoming year. And we'll, for me, I'll, I'll see you guys next season if, that, if, if I'm able to come next week. So I honestly, <laughs> don't, I honestly don't know yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for supporting Filipino basketball. Till next time, stay balling. <laughs>